Well, good evening, everybody. And thank you, Ronnie, for your very warm introduction and kind words, both for Vice Minister Zhang Yixue and for myself. It is my great pleasure and privilege to accept this Diplomatic Achievement Award on behalf of my predecessor, my good friend and colleague, Vice Foreign Minister Zhang Yixui. We sincerely thank the Asia Society for this prestigious honor. And I would also like to take this opportunity to offer my congratulations to Mr. Tom Donnell and to Mr. Sorensen, President and CEO of Marriott International. I think Ronnie was quite right to say that usually China sends its most able and accomplished diplomats to Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, <laughs> there are exceptions. <laughs> exceptions like me. But Ambassador Chang, my predecessor, he was my first immediate boss in the foreign ministry 30 years ago. And he was my predecessor here. I think he was another kind of exception. We are, he was exceptionally good. And during his tenure here as the Chinese ambassador, he dedicated himself to promoting communication and engagement between our two countries. He reached out to people from all walks of life and made unique contribution to this important relationship. He is indeed one of the most respected and popular ambassadors in the diplomatic circle in Washington, D.C. Now in his new capacity, Vice Minister Zhang continues to play an important role in China's foreign relations and devotes such a lot of time and energy on China-U.S. relations. As someone who have known and worked with him for almost 30 years, I'm really happy that the Asian Society has chosen to give him this special award in recognition of the great job he has done. As Ronnie just pointed out just a few days ago, President Xi Jinping met with President Obama at Sunnyland, California. The world was watching that event very closely. As a witness and participant of that meeting, I would like to take this opportunity to share with you some of my personal observations. It is truly a historic and strategic meeting between the top leaders of our two great countries, both in terms of format and substance. The meeting took place in America's West Coast, which is geographically the closest to China in the continental United States. There was no welcome ceremony, no 21 gun salutes, and certainly no ties. But the two presidents spent over eight hours together in a relaxed and friendly atmosphere, including two working sessions and a working dinner. They also had a long walk together and jointly met the press. They discussed a wide range of topics from governance philosophies, domestic and foreign policy goals, to the difficulties and the challenges they face as state leaders. They covered bilateral relations as well as regional and global issues. They talked a lot about cooperation, but they did not shy away from differences. In terms of the length of the discussions, the topics covered, and the quality of conversation, this is truly unprecedented. And the most significant outcome is that the two sides have decided to work together to build a new model of relations between the two big countries of China and the United States. Against the backdrop 
of the rapidly changing international landscape, where the relations between the largest developing country and the largest developed country would go, not only concern the fundamental interests of the peoples of our two countries, but is also closely associated with peace, stability, and prosperity of the Asia Pacific region and beyond. Both sides have recognized that we cannot afford to repeat the old path of rivalry and confrontation. We need a new path that features mutual respect and win-win cooperation. During the meeting, the two presidents pledge to build a new model of a relationship and make China and the US equal partners. So the goal is set and the direction charted out. The next key step is to translate this commitment into real policies and actions and let it be reflected in cooperation on various fields. It is also important to bring the general public of both countries on board and make sure that people in the two countries share this vision and support and participate in the building of this new model of bilateral relationship. In the next few months, the two countries have a lot of follow-up work to do. The success of this meeting gives us strong reasons to believe that such kind of informal meeting could be a new way of interaction for our leaders. Indeed, I believe this is a kind of new model of presidential interaction for the new model of relationship. We hope that President Obama will come to China for a similar meeting in due time. And we also hope the two presidents would exchange visits and maintain close communication through phone calls, correspondence, bilaterals during multilateral occasions. In addition, the two sides are now working closely on the upcoming fifth round of strategic and economic dialogues, and the fourth round of high-level consultation on people-to-people -people exchange. We look forward to successful outcomes from both. At Sunnyland, the two presidents reached a lot of consensus on bilateral issues, including economic and trade relations, mutual investment, energy, environment, people-to-people -people ties, subnational cooperation, and interaction in the Asia-Pacific region. They also agreed to work together more closely on the Korean Peninsula, climate change, and many other regional and global issues. From shale gas and clean energy to speed railway and infrastructure, from global economic governance to regional peace and stability, China and the United States have such vast common interests, and there's a lot that we can achieve together. At the same time, we also need to carefully and properly deal with longstanding sovereignty and territorial issues, as well as emerging challenges such as maritime interests and cyber security. And we have to make sure that these issues will not block the way forward for the overall relationship. We do know that we cannot address all the issues in our relations with just one meeting. To build a new model of relationship is a long-term mission and there is a long way to go. However, coming out of this meeting at Sunnylands, we are full of confidence that as long as we have the determination, as long as we put 
our wisdom and energy into it, we will be able to make this journey together that no one else has ever done before and build a new model of relationship between our two great countries. And before I conclude, I would like to make an additional point. This meeting at Sunnylands is the logical and natural outcome of years of joint efforts from both sides. The two presidents took the decision to meet, and they gave us guidance throughout the preparation process. And we have two great teams working together. And we are deeply grateful to our American colleagues for putting forward this idea of having such a wonderful but informal meeting between the two presidents. In particular, I want to thank Mr. Tom Donnellan and Danny Russell. Thank you very much. <laughs>